Whiskey Jason here, whiskey from the viewpoint of an American over here in Germany, tasting rare and exotic whiskeys. Today I have a 30-year-old single-grain whiskey from Strathclyde. So this is cast strength with 48.3%. This was distilled in August of 1990. So where were you August of 1990? That's a long time ago. All right, so um, 30 years is a long time. And um, yeah, it was bottled here in the year 2021, but it was April. So it didn't really reach the 31 year as of age. So um, whiskey base 187073 with the, the cask is... 64110096, as if anyone wants to know. 248 bottles. So it's a sherry cask. It does not say but. It sounds like it was a sherry hogshead. Now, I can... I would bet money. I said I'm 99% sure in my German video that this was not a full maturation in a sherry cask. It says here... Sherry cask, and it says here, um, matured in oak, <laughs> aged in oak casks. So I think that this was um, a finish. <sighs> That's the way things are. 180 euros is what this costs. 184 is basically what we are going to be paying for it. If you look at the color, even after 30 years, this should not happen for a um, a grain whiskey in a. I'm going to use the word tired in a quiet um, bourbon cask or hogshead. That, the sherry cask, imparted the sherry finish and parted a lot of whiskeys. Uh, I did for a couple of months ago an Inver Gordon, 35 year old, that had a Pedro Jimenez cask finish. It's like, Jason, why did you buy it? Well, I didn't read that it was 35. I did read that it's 35 years old. I didn't read that it's Pedro Jimenez. This bottle I found in my shelf, I was cleaning up a little bit. I said, okay, I'll just open it up and do a bottle share. And people wanted to try a 30-year-old whiskey. I understand that. Back then, I bought it because I was actually collecting for an um, old 30-plus-year-old single-grain tasting. I have two or three that are 40 years old. I have one that was 35. I had one that's still 30. And I had this, and I... I now, after I realized, oh, yeah, that's what that bottle was for. I had not eared, I eared marked it, but I had not somehow put a nice little post-it on it to remind me of that. Oh, well, now I get to review it. Now, before I review it, I want to briefly go over all the nice little distilleries we have in Scotland that make grain whiskey. Now, uh, we call them grain whiskey distilleries because they have column stills. Now, this is not 100% true. That is not what makes a grain whiskey a grain whiskey, exclusively. Yes, if you, it basically, we have two types of whiskey in Scotland. And many countries, for example, Japan and so on, follow the Scottish regulations. And so you have malt whiskey, which means it is 100% malted barley made in a, distilled in a pot still. And as soon as you don't have one of those two things, so for example, you don't have a pot still, you have a, a column still, whoops, it's now grain whiskey. Loch Lomond has a column still. They put 100% Scottish malted barley in there, and it's not a malt. It's a grain. And your Bruchladi, they put, for example, I think 35% rye into their pot stills and distilled it, called it the first Isla rye whiskey. Um, it's grain. Arbiki uses pot stills, hybrid stills. It's a grain because it does not fulfill those two things. It has to be 100% malted barley. If it's not, it's grain. And if it's not made in a pot still, hybrid still, or even a column still, it's automatically a grain as well. And so you can put different single malts together and make a blended malt. Yay. You can put a s different grain whiskeys together and make a blended grain. Yay. You can actually put scotch, I'm sorry, <laughs> you can put malt and grain together from the same or different distilleries. You have blended scotch, which is called scotch whiskey. And so here, this is the backbone 
of the whiskey distillery industry are the grain whiskey distillers. For example, Camembridge, owned here by Diageo, they produce over 110 million liters of grain whiskey a year. Wow! Gervin produces about 100 million liters of whiskey a year. It belongs to William Grant and Son. We have North British, which belongs to Addicton, 50%, and Diageo, 50%. They actually produce about 70 million liters. We have Inver Gordon, that produces about 36 million liters a year. It belongs to White and, White and Mackay, Dalmore, Fettercan, and so on. We have Strathclyde, yay, which produces about 35, 38 million liters a year. It belongs to Chevis Brothers, Penel Ricard. And we have the distillery no one actually talks about, at least not yet, Starlaw. So 2010 is what it went into. Um, it was founded, uh, Le Mate Case. Um, Glen Mori belongs to them as well, I think. And we have 25 million liters. And we have Loch Lomond that I mentioned. We have about 18 million liters. Yeah, I was right about La, La Martinique's. Um, Cutty Sark, Glen Mori, Label 5, Old Virginia, which I did not know, Bourbon Whiskey, um, Sam Barton, Glen Turner. So those are all, um, it's the second biggest uh, spirits producer in France. So first would be Pernod Ricard, second would be them. All right, so um, yes, so those are the seven. Basically only seven places are designated, or even six, are designated grain distilleries. And we put Loch Lomond in there, we have seven. All right, what am I going to compare it to? Since we have something here from um, Strathclyde, we have something from Chavez Brothers, I'm going to compare it to their own product, the 18-year-old. I very much like this 18-year-old whiskey. I can get it for about 60, 65 euros over here. I think this is, Roy calls it the permashelf. This has been for the last 18 years, basically, always on in my shelf, all right? Um, on my shelf, part of my um, whiskey collection. This I thoroughly enjoy. I've always enjoyed, and I continue to enjoy, and I can get basically three of these at the age of 18 here for one of these single casks. Now, I have 40%. Here I have natural color. Here I don't. Here I have non-chill filtered, here I have chill filtered. But I have a product that is actually available, not just 100, just not one of 283 bottles and has been sitting like lead in the shelving units of all the different shops in Germany that have this. Um, this, no one's buying it. This, I think, is a great, great great whiskey. If you're at a travel, if you're at travel retail, if you're at an airport, um, go there, say, hey, um, could I try the Chevis Regal 18 just once? And they go, no, we want to show you the um, Johnny Walker black label or the red. No, they won't go for the red. The black or the blue is what they'll show, want to show you. And I say, can I try the 18? And they might actually have a bottle in the bar there or behind the counter and they'll let you try it. This is what I would buy. I think this is better than, oh, I'm going to say a statement many people will not like. This is better for me than uh, Johnny Walker uh, Blue Label. It's blue as well. Yay. All right, on the nose, I get dried fruits. I get a tiny, tiny little bit here of um, honey, a little bit of wood. Um, it's definitely grain. Grain smells different compared to a single malt. Um, older grains can be so beautiful. Not all are, most are. Starting with about, in my experience, 20, 25, usually at 30 years of age, they are just so honeysuckle yummy. Now this, as it has maybe... I don't know, what is the mix? Is it 80% grain, 20% malt? Um, as this has more malt, this is actually on the nose better than this. 
All right, so cast strength, 48.3%. Don't forget, in America, often the um, ABV goes up over time. That's why we put in the barrel at 62.5%. Elijah Craig barrel proof, and it goes up. Um, Booker's goes up. Um, in Scotland, almost always, I had one guy talking about climate change and about it happening in Scotland as well. I've talked to a few distillers. No one's talking about that at the moment. They're talking about um, it's um, actually Glenn Fackless has the problem with their 105 that it's actually going down quicker than it is actually than it used to. <laughs> and so it's no, no, no. You need a you need a certain combination of heat, 40 plus as a hundred plus degrees Fahrenheit for the ABV to go up, and it has to do with humidity and so on. So no. All right. Let's try this. Cheers. I researched it. Um, I think it has uh, a lot of corn. They say in Scotland a lot of time maize. Um, but it's rumored to be based primarily on wheat hmm. instead of um, corn. Great. Uh, um, North British uses corn, but you do not have a mash tun. You have a cooker. In order to break down the starches of corn, and um, you need to have more than 100 degrees Fahrenheit, 100 degrees Celsius, more than 212 degrees Fahrenheit. And so you use a cooker for corn. And for um, wheat, you can, the, the, the point where you put in the mash tun is much lower than the boiling point of water. Hmm. I feel that the sherry cask is still fighting with the grain. With 48.1, 48.3%, it's still hot. And there's a dryness, dry fruit moment going on that does not perfectly integrate here with this whiskey. I know it's cast strength with 48.3%. I'm going to bring it down to about 40%. Try again and then go over here to this 40% product. I think it gets better with water. Mm -hmm. There's more creaminess, there's more oiliness going on in there. I diluted down the sherry cask influence a little bit more. Um, I'm going to give this a C plus with water and a C without water. Now, if you are trying to buy a 30 year old single malt, you are not going to be able to do that for 180 euros. So, um, yeah, I just took a look a little bit online what the 30 year old whiskeys are going for at the moment. So, um, if we go over here to a, oh look, we have a Daggio special release from 2020. Petit Viach, 450 euros. We have a Glen Moore, or a Glen, oh, MH is Moore, um, 600 euros. We have a Loch Lomond, 30 years, 630 euros. Glen Lossie, 30 year old, 630 euros. Tomor, 30 year old, 630. There's a trend going on in here. Taninik, 640 euros. Bunahaben, 30 year old, 670 euros. We go to Glen Farkless that I used to be able to buy, 689 euros. Ben Riach, 30 year old, 700 euros. Glen Berge, 31 year old, 700. Buna Cast Strength, 720 euros, and you get the picture here. All right, Linkwood, 30 year old, 750. Glen Tauchas, 31 year old, 750, and so on and so on. Kleinlich, 32 year olds, 800 euros, and it just gets even worse from there. All right, so um, Glen Goyne, 888 euros. Unbelievable the prices for the Glen Goyne 30 year old here at the moment. Glen Grant, 30 year old. 
it's more than 30 years old it's a thousand euros and 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 all right we even have a, i even have a telisco 30 year old in here for 1200 euros all right, so and the prices just go up. So this is a bargain. And especially if you're from um, the year 1990 and you want to have a whiskey for your birthday and so on, um, especially by now, if you're going to, if you want a whiskey that was distilled in the year of your birth, um, buy something now before we have the 40th and the 50th or even the 30th. Um, buy it like two years in advance because the prices jump the year before because people are like, oh, I have to go buy whiskey now for my birthday. And the, uh, the whiskey shops know that. All right, so buy something now, put it away for a couple of years, and then you'll enjoy it, your, um, the whiskey from the year you were born for a special, special occasion. All right, so the whole time I'm waiting to try this, and I must admit, hmm, hmm. And the thing is, every single time I've ever had the Chivas Legal 18, at the end it always goes up. I've had so many whiskeys. This is my vow. This is my my um, flavor indicator. I've had so many whiskeys that nah, and this always just ah, oh, just leaves a wonderful, pleasant um, flavor in my mouth. I thoroughly, thoroughly enjoy it, and I must admit, thank you, Penel Ricard, for this 18-year-old Chivas Legal. This Duncan Taylor, mm, probably should have put it in the blind tasting that I had planned. Let's see if I can get something else instead. <clears throat> All right, so I did a bottle share. It's gone. I'm happy, but um, I think old the rare old grain uh, series here from Duncan Taylor are interesting, to say the least. So if you're looking for something, that would be one of my tips to look for good old grains. Thank you very much. What is your favorite old grain? Let's talk about something that's at least 25 years of age. Um, is it, I just eliminated everything from Japan. I just eliminated everything. Whoops, my light just went off. I eliminated everything here from Ireland, but in Scotland, you might find some good old grains out there. Thank you very much for watching, liking, subscribing, and seeing you real soon. Bye-bye.